Hello everyone, it's me Mark. I'd like to welcome you all back to the Eclectic Gaza podcast. Um, definitely been a minute since we did one of these. I think it's been around nine months. So today's episode is just going to be talking about what happened as my first go around as a head basketball coach for a freshman team and pretty much the whole process that happened with that and pretty much that's kind of like the main reason why we haven't had an episode in you know I guess nine months so let's get to it um first I've been coaching on and off and either football or basketball for around I want to say about five years now so that's where my experience and me ending up in a situation like coaching even happened. So what last year I was coaching as an assistant at the high school that I graduated from for the freshman team. And in 2020, I ended up getting moved up after the other coach decided to just focus on school. So, you know, I definitely had to lock in, and that's why I had to put the podcast on hold just to focus on that. So it was around, I want to say, I think it was October when I got the news, mm-hmm. and then it was November when the process started to happen. But, you know, with everyone dealing with COVID, it was a strange season to deal with, most of the say. A lot of things that were just out of my control. And definitely not the best way to start off, I guess, a full coaching situation. So I went into, you know, into November knowing that I was going to have to, you know, be in control of everything so I didn't have my own assistant. So the first thing was getting through tryouts. And the tryouts was, you know, a little more stretched out and even a little... I want to say drag sometimes just due to all the situations dealing around COVID and also due to the COVID situation affecting the other sports in the school. So for basketball, our season actually, I think it got pushed all the way to start to December. So at that time during the tryouts, which was mostly in November, we were getting whoever we can to come try out and also having to wait for players from other sports but mostly football to get their opportunities to try out and also any students that possibly were quarantined so my first tryouts that I had to control by myself it was you know on top of that it was more of a little bit (laughs) of some more pressure due to the fact that I didn't have any of the other coaches with I had to work with the athletic director if anyone knows about the school the athletic director, he's kind of like the, I guess he's the person who laid down the fam- the foundation for the basketball program. So that was just like some extra pressure over my head on, you know, let me make sure I actually do good in front of the guy who pretty much, you know, made everything in the school happen when it comes to basketball. So, you know, when it came to at least setting up my team, my focus was just you know, players that obviously had talent, but also could develop beyond just the freshman level. And that kind of, I'll say, was a dueling situation personally for me as the season went on. So my tryout situation went on for like a month. That's how long it took to at least get the team set up just due to the fact that we had to do multiple tryouts and we had to do multiple cuts over and over and also just waiting for football season to come to an end and also giving players or people that were quarantined their opportunity to try out also. So even though, you know, I was thinking like, all right, I think I have my group all set up and ready. It's like, hold on, there's some more guys, there's some more guys I need to check out and some more and some more. And ended up like changing, I guess, my final roster a couple times just based off seeing the talent that was walking in and actually trying out. So I ended up having 13 
as my final, final roster, but just the process to get to that 13 was <laughs> definitely interesting. So I want to see at least the first nine were with the group that started with the first set of tryouts. And then when it came to the trickle down trials, the other players came in. So with that, it was just like, I think with my main thing is I'm always saying like, all right, what can I do with this guy? How would he fit with that one and that one? Like for me, when it came to at least my main thing of coaching, it's a matter of how can I bring out more talent out of that player? Like, how can I help develop them? Since I've always been an assistant, and most of my time when I was an assistant, I was usually given the duty of finding out if I can bring out more out of that player. Like, because I've been in situations where the coach would be like, I don't know what I can do with this player. See if you can do something with him. And then that's pretty much how I've done my style when it came to coaching, at least when I was an assistant. But this time it was, you know, all on me. So that's kind of like how I looked at most of the players. It's like, obviously you had your guys that were just, you know, hey, they're basketball players. There's no need to overthink it. Just make sure they can understand whatever system that I want to run. And then there were guys that, you know, I want to give them this opportunity to see if I can bring out more out of them. But the main thing I also went into it was like, I don't want to be one of those coaches that give a guy this opportunity because of, you know, I think he may do something. Like for me, it's like I was expecting, you know, playing capability out of all 13. They're, I didn't want any type of bench players. It's like when it came to the first five, the next five up, there shouldn't be like a, a entire drop off when it comes to capabilities and playing wise. And that's kind of the main thing when it came to coming to me and actually developing a roster. So when it came to, I guess, waiting for the football players to finish up, I think I ended up getting like, I want to say three more, three more players. And that brought it up to 11. And then the last two, it was a kid that be brought back, I brought back due to the fact that when it came to like the second set of cuts, um, I kind of had to bump heads with the varsity head coach when he came back because he wanted me to take on, I guess, a kid that just showed more talent, just looks like more of a basketball player. But he also agreed with me that the guy that I had to do the second cut on is solid. And I'm going to get a little bit more detail because I think um with this, I got to make sure I avoid saying too many names. But yeah, I pretty much I made sure like I got players that I think fit with each other. At the same time, I feel as though even beyond the season they have as freshmen, they can play when it comes to the JV and the varsity level. You know, beyond when I just you know had them as the coach. So once I got the team all set up, the first game of the season. I didn't have two of the players due to the fact that they were like the last ones on and they were still waiting for them, I guess, paperwork to be processed. So the first game of the season, we played Forest High School and it was just, it was more of, you know, a jitters game. It's like, I think I was the most focused person out there and the players at the end of the game were like, our bad coach, we literally forgot all the plays. And I was just like, so, the main thing with the team was um, my philosophy compared to what I did as an assistant the year before at the school was I wanted to make sure that they had more IQ and had more playing capability. I didn't just want to have a bunch of athletes just running out there and doing whatever because the year before when I was an assistant, it was kind of like that. Like, I didn't want to step on the toes of the head coach and our players were definitely good it's like they were good but it was just like we may had like one guy that was a basketball player a few athletes and guys that were trying to figure out how to play basketball overall and it was just like with that team it was whoever got the hot hand just get to him 
or pray we get in the transition and no half, half court offenses. And that's kind of like the issue that team had last year where we can we didn't accomplish as much as we should have with it when we had that much talent. So the year under me as a full head coach, the main thing I was drilling with them was knowing plays, knowing sets, and they kind of just like, I wanted them to have the IQ to actually be able to play and also sometimes just, you know, go out there and run whatever offense that they can against whatever defense is being thrown at them. And that's why I almost like treated the practices almost like an extra class for them because the main thing I wanted them to have was IQ because I knew they had the talent, knew they had the athleticism, but I didn't want them just out there running and just, you know, looking as though they don't know what to do. And unfortunately, that's what happened in the first game. So, first game, we ended up losing 51-33. to 33. And it was like, not even, like, a, it, the numbers say it's bad, but it was just like, by the time we got to the second half, it was like, alright, we're getting it, but they're hot, so we couldn't really do anything. So, it, it was just kind of like, alright, you know, it's learning. They're freshmen, and that's the main thing I had to put in my head. And the main thing that people had to keep telling me that, hey, it's freshman basketball. You gotta, you know, let them develop, let them learn, but don't get too locked in, expecting too much. And so that's kind of like been like one of the internal dual situations with me when it came to the season that I had to put in my head. And the next, the next game we played was against North Marion at their school, which was kind of a wash due to the fact that their team were putting down their freshman level JV down on the freshman team playoffs. And like the other thing with my duties as the freshman head coach is also helping out the JV and the varsity team, whether it's recording or taking stats. So it's like I already saw the JV team beforehand because for some reason the freshman game against North Marion wasn't at the same time as the JV and the varsity game. So it was like on a whole different day just because the school, their school wanted to possibly keep down the possibility of a COVID outbreak. So they separated the times for the freshmen and the JV and the varsity times. Oh well, on different days. So I had already seen the JV player, the JV freshman. It was just like, they look like, you know, guys that are supposed to be on the JV. So with them playing us, it was just like, <laughs> this was like a complete wash. And it, was, it like annoyed me because I saw the coach and I was like, you know, I was here like when the JV team played our JV team. So I like, I recognize all these guys that you have on there because you could know that the tone of the game changed when he took out the JV freshman and just had the regular freshman level players playing against mine. And they were like, all right, it's a close game. And the coach was like, all right, this game's getting too close. Hey, E5, get back on there. And it's a wash. Like, I literally had to deal with, like, on one time during fast break, one of the players on their team literally almost dunked the ball. The only reason why I didn't, he didn't finish it was because the ball hit the back of the back of the rim and bounced out. And it's like, the kids on my team is like, Coach, what are we supposed to do against that? And I'm just like, do not worry about it. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know what to do about that. So that game was a wash. But at the same time, though, that whole situation was like covering up the fact that my team kind of lucked out because I'll say one thing was with the whole COVID thing, the schools were being a lot more tight and they were willing to like shut down anything at any moment. So while we were away at that game, the JV and the varsity team ended up having to be quarantined for like a week, possibly even two weeks. And we happened to luck out that we were all the way in another town while they were practicing because we usually practice all at the same time or at least all in the same facility at the same time and so unfortunately like the JV and the varsity had to miss their next week couple of games due to the fact that you know they had to be quarantined and we kind of lucked out so we were like that's crazy but you know and so the next game was our first home game and it was against Vanguard. And with this one, this was where it was just kind of like, 
this is where I had to start changing up and had to change my philosophies on things and things that I learned like prior years. Like I had to realize that, you know, the game can be a little grimy, at least when it comes to coaching. Like one thing that I learned was like, A, out of respect, you usually don't press in the start of the game. And that went out the window. And it was just like, this is when, you know, this is when I came head to head with some of my players and I ended up losing a player because he decided to quit. And this is the third game of the season, kids starting, and, you know, he decided to quit. Didn't have the heart to tell me, had to find out from the players, and the players had to find out through Snapchat, like after that game. So it was like, all right, you know, I got to start. I have to change up some of my methods and how I want, you know, to run the rest of the season and how I want the rest of the team to be moving. So after the game, you know, I talked to the varsity head coach and the JV coach, and I was asking, like, what are some adjustments? What am I missing? So the main thing they told me was I got to remember that I got to, you know, that this freshman team and the freshman basketball it doesn't really matter. And they're thinking that I was taking it too serious by the offense I ran. The offenses I was running were some high school level, but also some college level. And the main thing they were telling me is like, when it comes to half court offense, at least at this level, freshman level, you gotta know that it's not always gonna work because one, they're not gonna fully get it. And two, it's like, you gotta sometimes just, you know, let them run and so they were saying like you know play as I'm running yeah that's good for JV and varsity level but for freshmen eh, it's not gonna stick sometimes like it'll maybe throw off the other teams because they're not expecting to see that type of play style at the freshman level but if your players aren't fully committed to running it or can't run it then it's just going to be stagnant and you're not going to really get what you want out of them. So I had to have like a redo of the offense or some adjustments. It was like, all right, let me first dumb down the offense, take out some of the plays that we were running and also bring in a whole different set that would work and also have them run. So listen to the varsity coach. He gave me a whole different set to run that pretty much was just free-flowing and, you know, let the players actually run. And so our next game was at Danella, which was our only win for the season. So, you know, it's a slow start, but it's a competitive game. But, you know, we ended up being down, like, I want to say, I think we're down by, like, 10 and by going into halftime. And so... Players are, you know, they're already frustrated. They're talking, they're pretty much talking shit on the sideline. And so I let them go chill out. And I'm like, all right, I'm hearing them talking shit about me. And I'm just like, you know what? Eh, Let me go talk to them. So I talked to them. And I think I even had to, yeah, I even cursed out my uh, starting point guard for a second. And it was just like, at the end of it, I was like, y'all want to win this game because the one thing you're going to need to do is actually listen to them. So they go out into the second second half. Second, Well, third quarter, we end up dropping 29 points. Like, that's the most points in the quarter they ever dropped. And it was one, because we changed the defense, and two, they actually listened to what I was saying when it came to running the offense. And then they ended up winning the game. And it was just like, yeah, they're hyping all that, but I'm just sitting there like, see what happened when we actually listen. So, obviously, my starting point guard, who I think has the capability of actually being like really, really, really good. Like, he first he had to end up like, he apologized. Like, he's like, hey, my bad coach, because the main thing is when you're good, obviously people are going to follow you. And then as a point guard, which I've learned from coaching now, is like, 
if your point guard's good and everybody's listening to him, then they're also going to listen to him when it's the wrong reasons. And obviously, when he was trying to go back and forth with me, obviously the other players are going to watch that, thinking they got the green light to do the same shit. Which, you know, I had to talk to him. And as soon as I got him on board, you know, everybody else were slowly following on. So, got that over with. Then I think we had to wait a while for our next game. And then our next game was another home game. It was another close one, but, you know, got out of our hands when it came to at least the free throws. Because there was just, you know, the other team, they had, they didn't have all their JV players on the freshman level because it was North Marion, but it was like, they had this one kid on there. It's like, He's a freshman, but hey, I, I'm pretty sure. I think this upcoming season, there's no reason why he shouldn't be on varsity. I'll put it like that. And, you know, just fouling him too much. And I think as soon as he knew, like, all right, he's the focal point, he was just getting to the other players on his team. And, you know, just lost that one. But it was like, all right, we're scoring more and we're actually being competitive. And I had to still put in the back of my head, like, all right, the coaches told me that all that it matters when it comes to freshmen is developing them. Like, I had to make sure that I'm making good players for the JV and the varsity to pick up for next season. And that was eating me up inside, but it's like, all right, I had to make sure that the players are developed. So, the next game, we had to go on the road to Vanguard and this one was annoying because like I had one of my starting players didn't have a jersey and he definitely would have been helpful if he had a jersey had my starting center gets hurt had my backup center on a roll in the first half fouls out in the first quarter it was just like Everything you can ask to go bad was going bad. And it was just like, all right, we we had to figure out how we can like stay competitive. And, you know, my two starting guards both ended up finishing the game like 20. But it was just like, just imagine if I actually had my forward out there. I had both of my centers it was just like, because at this point, even my uh, my other forward, he was quarantined. Like, that was the first player that got quarantined, and it wasn't even because of him. So, he had to be quarantined, so he was out. So, I'm missing a starting power forward. A backup center fouls out, and my, what's it called? Backup center was hurt. So, it's just like... <laughs> Like, when we get rolling and everything's good, it's like things just start falling apart. So next we had our home game, and we had to play a varsity basketball team from a private school called Redeemer Christian. So this one was annoying just due to the fact that, you know, we're playing a varsity team. Like, even though it's a small private school, like, I've seen this private school when I was coaching at the other school I was at. So it was just like... They got a schedule to play a varsity team. So I was just like, all right, we're going to, you know, put out the ever. So the main issue with this game was the, the size. It's like, obviously, it's a varsity team. Like, the smallest guy on their team was six foot. And everybody else was just like 6'2", 6'2", 6'2", 6'3". It was just a matter of, all right, setting up a game plan of trying to mostly try to get rebounds. And... We have to make sure that if we're not going to make the shot, we need to at least get it back and not give them second opportunities. And so the game was close. We ended up losing that game 46-38, but it was just like we <laughs> we were just stagnant. But it was just a matter of, all right, I had to turn that to another lesson where it's like, hey, y'all see how capable y'all are. Like, y'all just went toe-to-toe with a varsity team that – that doesn't happen when it comes to a freshman team. It's not like, you know, we're this big, known basketball school. Like, y'all are 
literally just coming out of middle school, and y'all just went toe to toe with a freshman, with a varsity team. So they kind of just, you know, they were still annoyed that they lost, even though it was a close game, and they knew it was a varsity team, but they felt like they could win, and I felt like they could win. And so the last game of the season, which shouldn't have been our last game of the season, because I think we ended up having like, I think we had two games canceled. So this ended up being our last game of the season. And I got hit with the fact that, all right, it's time for the report guard. You just lost your starting small forward because of the grades. And you lost your backup center because of grades, who was your starting center because your other starting center, he's injured and he's not coming back. So it's like, all right, I'm down three players. Getting ready, we're prepping. And then I get the news that, hey, yeah, you know, your starting point guard, yeah, he's he can't play because his class act wants it. So I'm down a point guard, a forward, and a center, and two centers. So I'm down to my last couple of players. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I don't want to say I'm out of it because I'm like, all right, this is a winnable game. But I'm just sitting there like, all right, this is the first team we played during the season, and I knew they weren't good. And we went out there, even with the players that I had, because, again, I don't have any players that were bench guys. These are all guys that are capable of going out there and getting it. Like, it was just, you know, the pieces didn't fully fit. Like, my backup point guard, the issue we had during the whole season was, it was a matter of, when the lights are on in this actual game, he's he's going to be shook on both sides of the ball. Like he's going to turn over. He's going to he's going to just let even the worst guy on their side of the team score on him. It's like just stage fright. And like the kid ended up crying on the sideline when I had to pull him out because I was just like, this is a wonderful game, and I can't have you just out there just giving it up. So. I had to take him out and just had to just put the ball in like the next best player's hand. And it's like, with this guy, it was like, with him, I know he's capable of being like one of the best two way players in the county. But for him, he's, you know, he's a sponge. You know, he's young and he's just trying to learn every way to make his own game better, which I respect. But the main thing was him not using his best capability on offense and that shooting like he's a legitimate shooter but with him during the whole season it was just a matter of all right i don't want to just be a shooter which i can respect but what our team is we have everybody that can do their thing but i want you to do what you're best at and for him it's shooting and he didn't want to shoot like and the main thing was one the first couple games he lost confidence in his shot because you know he just didn't have time to get it off and for me I had to you know re-fix his shot I'll say that like his shot had to be fixed a little bit but for him it became like all right I'm gonna do floaters I'm gonna try to attack the paint and I'm like that's not your game you're like you've got to shoot and so with the last game of the season finally shoots and ends up finishing the game with like 15 points off like and he had four threes so it's like, even his dad was like, where was this man at? I'm like, I knew we can do it. He's just trying to do everything else. So we ended up losing the last game of the season. And it was just like, it was a matter of, all right, we could have won this game if we had even like the two guys that got kicked out due to the grades. Like, if we had those two, we could have won this game. But it was just like, all right, I had to go and talk to them at the end of the game. And it was just like, what can I say? Like, all right, I know what I can say. I had to think about it. And so the first thing I had to do was, first I had to talk to the two guys that I know, like for them, this is like a second option. Like the power forward that I had, who had to be quarantined, like he he's capable of, like he's, if he wants to, he can play. He can play basketball next year. Like, there's no questioning it. It's like, does he want to play? Because he's already, he was already a varsity level football player as a freshman. 
And so it's like, I asked them, like, if you actually want to put in, like, even a quarter of the effort, like, you can play basketball next year. And then I had to talk to the guy who ended up being, like, the leading scorer for my team. And it's like, for him, I had to tell him, it's like, same thing for you. Because he was a varsity football player also as a freshman. I'm like, if you want to play, if the two of y'all want to play basketball next season, you can't. Like, don't let this season, like, scare y'all off of playing basketball when I know y'all are capable of playing at a high level, especially on JV or possibly even varsity. And so they said they'll think on it because, again, for them, basketball was just something else to do. Like, but for the other 10, like, they really want to play basketball. And they're all capable of it. But it's like, obviously, when it comes to the next season, they'll be in the front of the line. Well, they would have been in the front of the line, but due to a coaching change, I don't know how solid that was going to be. But... They're going to be in the front of the line because we they've shown that they can play high school level basketball and they're going to actually be good at it. So, with the rest of the guys, at least the other, I'll say nine, it was like, y'all have to take advantage of the fact that you got a season under your belt. You know, if you really want to play basketball next year, when it comes to the off season, can't be chilling, you can't be not on working your game or nothing like that, you have to be working because there's going to be a whole class of freshmen coming next year. And there's going to be those guys that didn't make the team who are going to be maybe working on their game, trying to, you know, get that opportunity to take a spot that you could literally walk onto. So it was just telling them, like, you know, you have to, if you want it, next season then you just have to be on top of it yourself and fix all the things that i told you to fix during the season and just you know improve on what you are already good at because it's not that often that a freshman team has to play a varsity team or play a whole bunch of jv level players in a season because we only played eight games due to the cancellation so they have time to at least work on their game and actually be ready for the next season because our season ended in January due to the cancellation. So they have more than enough time and if they were to just stick with it and you know not be lazy or in the other players' cases not do something like not stay on top of your grades, then there should be no problem for them to just walk onto the JV team, or possibly even sneak onto the varsity team. So that was that was, was the case when it came to the players. But for me, obviously the season had to keep rolling because I was still an assistant for the JV and the varsity team. So when it came to the situation, when it came to the JV and the varsity. JV, you know, they didn't, They their main issue was the fact that they kept having players get quarantined due to being in classes that just happened to have players that, I mean, other students that were possibly showing symptoms of COVID. So they kept losing players due to quarantine. So it was just like their rhythm kept getting messed up. Like their team chemistry was getting messed up because of all the, you know, quarantine situations for the JV team and for the varsity they maybe got the worst because um the varsity coach ended up stepping down because he was getting ready to move up north so they didn't even have their head coach and the AD who you know he's already a proven and great coach you know he had to come in literally like in the last I want to say what was it last five weeks so pretty much the regular season was almost over so that's the main thing and the fact that you know they had to have a new coach at the end of it was just kind of like oh what are we gonna what is gonna happen what's the how much of a change is it gonna be at the end of the season when we're about to get ready for playoffs because what I think the AD had to step in as a coach and 
like in the middle of January. So we had to step in and pretty much coach them all the way until the end of the season, which ended up in the playoffs. So it was just like, it was rough, but they, you know, they, uh, they won games. They lost a couple, but it was just like, it wasn't too much of a drop off when it changed to the coaching style or the coaching change overall. So, you know, they won a couple games. They got into the playoffs, made it to, I think it was what, second round of the playoffs, and then just ran into a buzzsaw. And they just pretty much lost it because of Sox. Like, so I'll say when it came to the varsity and JV team, the main issue all the way starting at the tryouts was the fact that the team knew that there wasn't that much size in the school. Like, the guy that the school was pretty much thinking was going to be pretty much the face of the team, pretty much one of the top players in the county, he can play due to grades. Saying he's about 6'6", six, six, and was literally like one of the top, I want to say centers and one of the leading bloggers in the state of Florida. And he couldn't get in because of grades. So now the whole mindset even going into the season was, all right, it's going to be guard heavy because I want to say the next tallest guy within the whole basketball program, he's about 6'5", and I coached him the year before, and he's didn't make the varsity team, but he's on the JV. But it's like he would be nowhere near even like a fourth of what that kid could bring, even with his size. So it was the issue that kind of affected the varsity and JV was the fact that the teams were going to be loaded with guards. I don't mean like a 6'2", maybe get away with it if the kid's bulky type of guards, but like, you know, you know, little wing guys, like, you know, that six foot to lower level guys. And that's what kind of affected the JV team also, because usually when it comes to the JV, the team is usually made up of freshmen and sophomores. But due to the fact that at least with those junior JV guys that were sophomores last year, they're mostly guards. And, you know, a few of them got onto the varsity team, but some of them didn't. They just weren't ready. But they were still too talented to just say, hey, you're going to have to sit out the season. So instead of, you know, sitting them out for the season, they decided, all right, just put them on the JV team. And so that kind of also kind of stopped any opportunity for the sophomores or the freshmen from last year to eat on the JV. So it was just, the season was just weird, even just like the build up for the rosters. And I was definitely kind of hurt by it because like one of the guys that I coached the year before on the freshman team, kid started pretty much the whole season, you know, played big, and he was just like, you know, has a whole different type of energy that just, just infectious. And he couldn't make the team, and not because he wasn't good, and he wasn't better than the guys out there. It was because, all right, they want the established JV guys that they know that they can use for next year on the JV team. So they kind of like, all right, you just, we got to catch you out because you're not at those guys' level. Where it's like, any other season, he would be on there with no issue. So it was just like, seeing him not make the team, like, as a coach, that personally hurt me. But I just, you know, had to just flow with it because, I mean, if I was a JV coach, I definitely would have gotten him on there either way. But I understand, like, this is for, the buildup is for making sure that the school's varsity team is competitive for the years to come. So, yeah, it was just, it was just a weird season just with the COVID just being the main issue. But just building the rosters and everything it was just like you don't know what to expect but it was just like the main issue was there's no size within the school like i think it most schools you'll have those you know you can get away with having that six four guy or six five guy being the center but when it comes to like the fact that most of those guys were either freshmen or they're not really basketball players yet wasn't going to work and when you have a team that has too many 
or a school that just has just a lot of just pure guards, it also just messes up the balance of the team. So it, it was, you know, overall, I'll say the season was it was a learning experience. Like I definitely know when I decide to coach again what I need to do for myself or what to look towards when it comes to you know building the roster and just making something that can win because what I think like when the season ended pretty much the main focus for the AED was you know getting the next coach because he kind of pretty much told us that hey I'm not I'm not coaching like you know (laughs) he has no interest in coaching anymore like he'll come down and help out but he he doesn't want to coach and I don't blame him because he was coaching for like I want to say like 20 years so at some point you know you want to retire and I guess he's one of those guys that you know he wants to and he wants to help out but he isn't trying to be in the full swing of the whole coaching you know lifestyle again so so our season well the season like ended in like the beginning of February after we ended up losing in the second round of the playoffs and pretty much it was just a waiting game. Like the AD said, hey, he'll let me know when they get the new head coach. And I didn't hear from him. Like, that's the, that's the thing. Like, I didn't hear from the AD. And like, I literally had to find out like through like a random basketball Facebook page of who the new head coach was. So obviously with that, it's kind of like, now I have to look at it like a business where or any you know corporation where you know when you have a new head or a new takeover when it comes to a business sometimes that business will or that new corporate or new head of the group will obviously want to bring in their guys or keep who they want and unfortunately I think it ended up being a bringing in their own guy so I found that out in, I think, April. And so when we, when I found out, I was like, all right, I haven't heard from him. And the only thing so far was just request to see the film. So I was like, all right, so I already know what's up. So let me just plan, plan out for what I need to do next, at least when it comes to possibly coaching. Again. So I want to say June, I think it was June 12th when we finally had the ceremony slash banquet for the end of the season, which was a long drop off for, you know, to do a banquet or a ceremony because at that time, what, the seniors had already graduated, some of them already in their colleges, definitely not thinking about this, and some of the other players are wrapped up in football, and, you know, when the banquet happened, you know, I think only four players came out there. No, it was actually three. And they just happened to be, you know, my freshman players. And it was just, you know, an awkward situation. Like, nobody cared at that point. And, you know, for me, it was like, all right, I meet the coach. Didn't have, like, anything to say to me. So I was like, all right. So there's that. And I also met the new JV coach happened to be that varsity coach for that Redeemer Christian school. So I'm like, oh, that's that's interesting. And I was just like, all right. So with that, it was just a matter of, you know, sitting there listening to the speeches. And I talked to the AD, and he was just like, just ask if I'm needed or if I'm possibly can find a position there and I'm just like nah I mean if I was needed or if you know the new varsity coach wanted to talk then you could talk so obviously that's not the case and as of right now I think I am just going to be on a hiatus from coaching at least until I'm done with school so right now the focus is finishing school and then Once that happens, then I think I'll just get back into coaching. And this time around, well, the next time around, it'll be in a situation where obviously I have more control of 
my own faith when it comes to the coaching situation because as I've been finding out and even beyond basketball it's like you gotta have at least some type of paper that says hey I'm educated to you know get what you want so right now the focus has been you know finishing up school like I don't have too long and I think once I'm done with school the opportunities will open up for me even more so yep so that's kind of like the short (laughs) version of my first year as a coach as a head coach in basketball which is you know was interesting 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 as well um obviously i want to get more detailed but obviously again it's about not dropping too many names confidentiality and all that but i will try to i guess do somewhat of a part two to this because i'm going to be having the person that actually got me into coaching onto the podcast and we're just going to be talking about pretty much how it is to coach youth sports you know his his process and his style of coaching and you know his journey through coaching and then also how I ended up coaching under him for a while so yeah um it's good to do this again definitely been uh (laughs) <laughs> been a minute but you know it's good to just jump back into recording the podcast and you know just let y'all know what's been going on and just tell the story so again like how i used to say stay safe you know enjoy life take advantage of any opportunities and come back and listen to another episode of the podcast